Uncle Josh and Neb. This is Shechem or Shechem, your course instructor here, giving you the very first lesson here on the Meta Nature. We're going to make this alphabet lesson quick, sweet, as painless as possible for you. Um, what I wanted to do was to, under, to get you guys to understand the concept of the language uh, before we really get into the symbols. I want you to understand um, the way the people that spoke this language thought about the way they use their words. Um, a lot of times people use words and they don't know their meanings or they don't really have a deep sense of connection to what they say. Uh, but with Metal Nature, everything is very heartfelt, everything is very serious, and we use these, this language to have life and uh, to show respect. So right here, um, just to give you an idea of you know how the, the reading of the language works, this symbol here is what we call a triphonic symbol. It's a symbol that makes three sounds. We haven't gone over triphonic symbols, we're just going over unifonic symbols or letters, which are basically symbols that make one sound at a time. Later on, once you get comfortable with the language, I'll show you uh, more symbols like this, uh, where one symbol is making three different sounds. So this is inter, this is med. So right here, this is a, a diphonic sound or a biphonic sound, because there's two sounds here, an M and a D sound. And this is a staff. So the divine is standing on its hand. And here is a determinative, which we will also talk about later. Determinatives basically sum up all this with one symbol, right? So right here, we have a man pointing with his hand to his mouth. So again, this idea of speech and speaking with a divine sense of purpose is being emphasized here. We're not just speaking um, anything. We're not speaking from our ego. We're speaking from God. And this symbol here is often used for what people would translate as God or goddesses. So the metal nature can also be written this way with three staffs. Whenever you have three things, it automatically uh, creates a U sound. So here we have medu because we have three staffs and then we have inter. So medu Inter. Medu inter. So I want everybody to write these glyphs down. You could write it either way. I would encourage this way first, and then, you know, once you get comfortable, this is a much quicker way to write out Medu Nature. So once you get this down, uh, after you get done with this, then you can head on over to the alphabet, and I'm going to break that down for you step by step. So here we have a full chart of all the basic symbols. Um, this is just an overview of what I was just talking about called unifonic symbols, which means each symbol here is basically assigned one sound. So here we have, for example, a hawk is making a ah sound or an arm stretched out is also making an ah sound. Here we have a leg, which is making a B sound, right? So get familiar with this. I want you to watch this video a few times. You want to make sure that you understand all these letters and the symbols that they're associated with are real life things. So it's not anything, you know, too difficult. These are things that you already know. You just have to start associating them with sounds, right? So let's start right away. Let's get our hands dirty. Here we have, like I was talking about, a hawk vulture. Now, the reason that this is chosen to represent the I sound is because this is the sound that the vulture actually makes. If you listen to um, any bird that flies very high, it often makes an I sound, right? And that's the sound of the heart. And that's also a sound of Kundalini Yoga, which we'll talk about later. Um, but this basically just represents your will. And this represents anything that is placed on high from your higher self. This is what is pronounced as B. Uh, you know, the toe is looking a little crusty right here, but um, you know, basically this symbol was chosen because energy rises from the soles of the foot and it has to circulate here and then it rises up. Just like Kundalini energy circulates at the bottom of the spine and then it rises up to the crown chakra and the pineal gland. So this will always represent rising up. You want to think of a leg, um, you know, jumping up at an angle and, you know,
know, rising that energy from the bottom to the top. Whoa. Sorry about that. So here we have D, which as I showed you, uh, it is represented by the hand. And um, also here we have the ah sound, which you'll often see. So this is often used for offerings or for giving things. And it just represents being open, not only to just giving, but also to receiving. The cool thing about the E, I, and the Y thing, uh, we don't have all that confusion like English. Basically, this is a soft I sound, so E. It's a reed, and if we wanna have a Y sound, we would just do two I's together. So two reeds, and uh, use one symbol for the same letter, for two different letters, I'm sorry. And it's very easy to pick up on with some practice. Here we have the F sound or the F sound. This is made by a viper snake, and this will also represent masculine energy. This represents masculine energy because viper snakes are very active. They're very vicious. Um, they, they hunt down their prey uh, for hours at a time. So um, later on, when we start writing out actual sentences, you'll see uh, more and more of these uh, because these are used to represent the masculine pronoun. Here we have a very simple jar stand. So the jar would be placed on top of this, and this is pronounced G or G. Here we have H, which is just a uh, twisted flax. This symbol basically represents Kundalini energy as well. Very similar to the Kadasius. This also represents infinity, and it also represents the yin and yang. Here we have the Jason, which is a serpent. Now, this is a very interesting symbol because the serpent is often shown in the metal nature with his mouth open, as you see here. And it's all, always related to speaking. So whenever some, something is being spoken or you're writing about somebody talking, you're going to use this symbol right here. And this is also the origin of the Adam and Eve story where the snake talked to the woman. More on that later. Here we have the K sound, which is a hard C sound. And again, we don't have all that confusion between C's and K's. Um, K is treated as its own separate letter. And this right here is just a bowl. So energy has to be contained um, in order to coil itself. And this is the coiling, which is the handle, and this is the actual bowl. And uh, you'll see this a lot as well. Um, another cool thing about the Meta Nature is that you'll see animals stretched out, um, very comfortable and relaxed. Um, here we have L for lion, uh, which, re which represents the sexual energy in the body. You want it to be stretched out. You want it to be flexible. You don't want it to be stiff. And um, it's just very quick and easy to remember. Whenever you think of the word L, just think of a lion and you'll be good. Here we have um, the M sound, which is made by the owl. Now, the reason that the owl was chosen for this is because of the degrees that it uses to turn its neck. It's actually turned at a 180 degree angle right here from the opposite side and usually owls are out at nighttime. So this just represents being aware, consciousness. Um, it represents being awake in some cases. Um, it also represents, um, you know, resurrection. So um, there's many different meanings to this symbol, but for right now, just remember that it is pronounced M. Here we have the N sound, N. Uh, you'll also hear a lot about the waters of Nun the waters from where everything comes from. And it's just a wave, you know, that's all it is. It shows that, you know, it's very easy to describe science when you have images. Um, so, you know, here's an O, which is basically a knot. So uh, just think of a knot, you know, like in your shoelaces or, you know, with anything that you do uh, with ropes, um, that will be your O sound. Here we have the P sound, which is basically a door a doorway, a opening, or sometimes it could also be um, an entrance. So you want to look at the P sound as, you know, very, very important because sometimes it's an, an entrance way to a different dimension. Here we have the Kwa sound, which is a heel, as you can see, very, very simple. 
The R sound, which is a sound you will see a lot, is an open mouth or open lips. So again, this always represents something being spoken. Here we have an S sound, which is basically a stretched out towel and a square. So um, two symbols that you'll see quite frequently. I see this one a lot more than I see this one. But um, sometimes when you just see a blank square, um, they'll put two diagonal parallel lines in the middle to give it an H sound, and this will become SH. But by itself, just a square rectangle is an S. Here we have a loaf of bread, which is the T sound. And here we have another stretched out string, uh, which is basically showing how energy flows uh, from one end to the other. And for you, we have a, a quail chick. For V, we have the same symbol that we have for F, which would be a snake, a viper snake. And we can also use this symbol for V as well. For Y, again, I showed you this on the I video. We have two reeds next to each other. And here we have a bolt or like a lock here for the Z sound. So in just a few minutes, you've already gone through the whole alphabet, and I hope that I made that as easy as possible for you. What I want you to do now is to pause the video, go back over it one more time, because now we're gonna do another warm-up exercise so that we can see, you know, get you warmed up for the metanetra and get you actually testing what you know. So what I want you to do is to try to identify as many symbols that you can recognize based on what we just went over. I will pause the video right here, um, you know, talk to the people around you and just try to see what you can come up with. This, by the way, is a relief from King Mentuhotep's grave. Um, this is actually one of, the, one of the forms that are in better condition here, uh, but you can see a lot of the symbols quite well um, and they're still in color as well. So if you've had the chance to pause the video and to actually look, I'll show you what all of these symbols are step by step. So this right here uh, is a symbol you probably haven't seen yet, but this is the rib cage and the diaphragm together. So here are your ribs and this is the diaphragm and this is pronounced ha. And this is the T sound, which is the loaf, ta. So hot tea. And here is a heart. These are the valves on the right and left ventricles here on the heart. And this is pronounced ab. Here we have a bowl, which represents neb. Here we have, uh, it looks like the lungs and the spine. Here we have water, which is n. Here we have a bowl, which is a k sound. So nka, nka. Here we have two lines. Here we have a symbol here, which is a triphonic symbol, which mean which means nefer, which means beautiful. And here we have the e sound. So again, nka, neferi, nka. Neferi. Here's an U sound from the quail chick. Here's another T sound that you should recognize. So Oot. Na. And these birds right here are Jabiru birds or gooses. And a lot of times when you see these in threes, they'll represent suns. So uh, we'll talk about that later, but I just want to give you guys a very quick intro into how to read that. Here we have the Shin symbol, which represents infinite energy. And uh, this symbol is actually stretching out here. Um, again, we have another animal here, similar to the lion. This symbol is actually pronounced un. And this represents expansion, comfortability, stability, and good health. So here we have Shin Un Na. And here we have a viper snake. So nfa, nfa. Here we have some vases. Here's a picture of King Mentuhotep. 
homage to the ancestors. Here we have a block, which is ma, in, so min, minnet, amint, amint, u. Here we have a hotep symbol. I can't really see these too well, but this symbol itself is pronounced cartouche or what they call a cartouche. Whenever you see this, um, you're, you're seeing somebody's name. So get familiar with looking at cartouches. Um, these are very important so that you know who you're looking at, right? So here's the Mintu, and then here's the Hotep. Mintu, remember the quail chick? And then this is Hotep. Here we have Nter. Here we have a D sound. Here we have the Not, which is an O. So Ndo. Here's a star symbol, which often represents Dua or praise. Again, we have a T here. Looks like we have hot T, hot ta, and hot tat. Here's another name here. Looks like beautiful Lord of all. Here's Nefer, Neb, Nefer, Neb, Nebu. If I'm seeing this correctly. Um, here we have an end pronunciation, which represents uh, the pharaoh. Here we have uh, geese. Here we have men, hotep. Men, two, hotep. Men, two, hotep. So I hope that this video is very helpful for you. I hope that it helps you, you know, come to a better understanding of metal nature. And I'll see you in the next video.